Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our new podcast. Uh, today, we have, you know, the very huge pleasure of having you here surfing with us today. Welcome to our podcast. Uh, I'm excited to have you here. We both are. And as a little of those of you that have been following the podcast for some time now, we also have with us our co-founder and CMO, Eduardo. Uh, thanks, thanks for joining us. And obviously the reason why Eduardo is here and, and why Serafine is here, you know, which is kind of like the main person, uh, is that we're going to talk a lot about marketing in sports. And we have a lot of interesting things to, to talk with you guys about today. So Serafine, first of all, thank you for taking the time. It's an honor having you here. And we're excited to have you a part of the podcast. Thank you, uh, Ole, and thank you, Eduardo, for, for hosting me. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> for sure. So b before we dive into kind of like, you know, the different questions we have in sports marketing, I think it would be key, for, you know, for our viewers, audience, listeners to get a little bit more insights about you. You know, if you can share a little bit about your background, you know, what do you do in, 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 in the sports marketing field? What is your role? Uh, just, just share a little bit about yourself. Sure, sure. I mean, look, my my my, back, my professional background started uh, prof in, in the professional uh, business of sports back in the year 2000. Right. And, um, you know, uh, I was before that, uh, time before that, of course, a professional athlete uh, in yeah. tennis. And so um, that experience is what drove me. <clears throat> my my interest into into become part of the of the sports uh, industry, right. um, and like I said, you know, I professionally started in the year two thousand. Um, out of uh, uh, a multinational company agency based in London, and but we were uh, operating from the Barcelona office, um, <clears throat> doing support for all the assets across EMEA in Latin America, right. at the time sports world media and marketing. Uh, which unfortunately was one of the companies that um, did not did not uh, continue its uh, successful story. Right. Um, uh, anyway, due to to certain circumstances. For sure. Um, but um, and um, you know my my role nowadays is a marketing uh, international marketing consultant um, yeah. is working with athletes brands. Uh, teams, clubs, federations, right. uh, agencies. So the different stakeholders that compose our industry. And it's very interesting though, because you you literally have, uh, first of all, like, I think we all can relate of the whole started as, you know, an athlete, you know, I mean, like, you know, the different levels, of course, I'm not going to say I was a pro or anything because I wasn't, but, but it's kind of like a typical, you know, you do as well, like, you know, being an athlete, we, we all kind of like started there and there's something about sports, right. That is so passionate yeah. and you know, we really love it. And another thing, you know, is, is, you know, very cool. And why we invited you for this podcast is that, you know, you touch upon so many different stakeholders, you know, you have athletes, you have, you know, clubs, federations, you know, all these different kinds of things, which, which I would say you're very fortunate, you know, to be able to, to work with all those different entities. What, what is your thoughts about, uh, you know, uh, what, what is kind of like the difference you will could would kind of consult you know like say like an athlete uh, team and a federation you know what, what is the differences here sure um, no good question because of course every every stakeholder has different different needs right different requirements different attention um, so you know when, when working with athletes uh, <clears throat> What my role is basically is to try and understand the needs of the athlete first right. um, and take into consideration all of its objectives, values, principles, um, and, and strategy moving forward, which, which I define in terms of you know, potential brand ambassador uh, roles, marketing image rights, partnerships, um, et cetera, et cetera. From, from the athlete's side, you always want the athlete to be covered on certain areas. For sure. um, a federation has a different, different elements of, and, and different needs, which are you know, also focused towards the sponsorship side. Yeah. Um, teams, clubs, uh, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, they're, they're, all, they're, all, they're all out there basically also you know, trying to have 
new partnerships, new new brands involved yeah. into within their, sure. their portfolio. So, you know, and my, my role is to really understand the needs and the strategies of all the different stakeholders um, right. and try to match them with the right brands, with the right, um, uh, let's say, candidates in this, in this case that, sure. that have the right feeling. Because at the end of the day, these brands need to get a return on their investment and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Yeah, and feel and feel for, you know, their association with the with the athlete, um, right. for what he represents, to you know whether it's on a national level or it's on a global level or regional level, um, you know it's um, and and the same goes and applies for, for for a team club, you know, uh, it, yeah. it, you adapt according to the scope and the magnitude of, of of each stakeholder, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can I bring a question, sort of thing? Sure. Yeah, I, I work with athletes in the past as well. I work with a uh, like UFC champion, MMA athletes. So it was a bit different in the right beginning. Like they don't have the same media, or the like other tennis athletes, football, etc. And I always had this also this idea that my work as a marketing manager from them was like to give them the best structure, like medical. Uh, sponsorship, right. media, help them with the contracts, nutrition is everything. So they only need to train and do what they do best, compete and win. And, but one of my main concerns at the time, and I think this also follows from, from many uh, athletes manager is like how to handle the social media. Because as you said, you deal with the brands to bring them, bring the brands to, to, to support them, to give more to profit and to monetize the social media. As we see like Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, they make more money in social media than with the, the seller at Juventus. So how do you deal with athletes to make them understand or if, or if you are also responsible to what they post, what they share, how, how do you deal with, with, this, with this topic? Yeah, hello, hello. look, very important comments here, Eduardo. Uh, but what I must say here is that you know the world of sports. Um, like I said, I was I, I started back in the year 2000, and from 2000 to now, the evolution, the uh, process of professionalization across all stakeholders, has been you know has been um, extraordinary and continues to be professionalized. Uh, within teams, clubs, within the management of the athletes, uh, within brands, within federations, that process continues to go. It is a fact that you know our industry was born and bred in in the USA, and that has you know uh, expanded and extended into other continents and countries around the world. And managing those those elements, those criteria, and how relevant it is today, um, the 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 component of what we release, what we publish, how we do what we do, when we do it, it requires, you know, specific professionals with the understanding how relevant is what you do, when, and how, you know? So, uh, you know, how we go about it as, as, a, as a consultant is, you know, analyzing very strategically all the, all the tangibles and intangibles that go around the athlete. Uh, if we if we talk about an athlete, you know, because uh, it's not the same having an athlete that has a hundred thousand followers than an athlete that has you know hundred two hundred million. Of course, the the the, the scope of the noise is uh, is quite quite amazing. Um, so um, you know, and there are you know, there have been examples whereby you know it, it's it's critical that you know the content and the message that you portray, you know. It may be that you may do it on your own as an athlete, but sometimes, or nowadays, depending on the profile of the athlete, there are teams that care and, 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 and cater for the right, you know, uh, message to be uh, to be portrayed, uh, because at the end of the day, they have influence. They power, they have right. that power, that power of influence. So, it's uh, you know, it, it, they have to be themselves always, of course. Yeah. But like I say, it's not the same having a hundred thousand followers than having two hundred million. Um, so, yeah, exactly. you know, I think uh, we we've been, we've experienced you know from football to tennis to basketball, uh, motorsports, we've experienced how you know athletes have made mistakes but have learned from them. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're only in a learning process mode. 
And, yeah. um, you know, this is a, a, a very, uh, I think as this evolution that we've experienced in the last 19, 20 years, um, it, the, 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 the power of social media technology within sports across all stakeholders, across all the assets, which are events in particular because of its media awareness and broadcast, um, you know, it's, it, it just has more relevance, it's more importance. You know, so professionalism continues to to apply. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I agree, stop, and yeah. I think one of the most important thing for the athletes is try to keep them themselves. Like don't lose, don't lose their sense, right? Because I see many they, they they have like an agent behind them. They try to 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 write for them. They they try to create something, and you see there is not the athlete, so you, you kind of lose the, the essence. So I think that is, of course, you need to have the support to show them the the way, so they don't correct. Don't lose right. different things, but don't lose their essence. Look, at the end of the day, if we talk about athletes um, and their power of influence um, across the world, if we if we look at iconic sporting athletes um, and and those young talent moving up, uh, whatever the sport that may be, um, you know, in order for them to reach the maximum peak in talent is to focus on the sport. Okay. So wh wherever possible, those upcoming young talent to have the right environment, the right team around them, is critical or it's very important if you, if, if you can uh, support it um, because that's the way forward to reach um, and further develop and, and exploit your talents in order to reach success and grow up the ladder. You know, so um, if you have an athlete taking care of sponsorship deals, negotiating, negotiating deals, uh, doing posts on social, which he can, of course, or she or he can at any time, of course, um, but courting, in a coordinated um, right. format, uh, that, that, that should be, that should, that should be the, the, the criteria moving forward um, in, ter in terms of having a, a team behind you. Uh, whether small or big, or how, right. how well you can you can allow that to, to be structured. But um, if an athlete is involved in everything, it'd be very hard, very difficult for him to to manage the scope of, of, of everything if he wants to make a career out of out of his sport. Uh, it's also one thing that I think is important here, though, and and I mean, like we can touch a little bit upon that where. Uh, you know, moving forward with like, where do you begin uh, as a marketing consultant? But one of the things like we haven't, we, obviously we touched a lot about athletes and I think, uh, you know, we talked about like not losing your identity, but in many cases you have to build that identity too and the brand, you know, behind the athlete. And that's probably right. one of the, maybe the challenging uh, faces that you have to, to come across, right? Because I think you're 16, 17, 18 year old, you're just starting, uh, you, you don't know like your own identity yet, you know, you're very young. So uh, Correct. Like, just uh, like some thoughts on that, like how do you work on like helping them build their identity and, and brand? And Edu can jump in here too from like his experience, but I want to hear you surfing first. Sure. Yeah, j let me just add one, add what yeah, I sure. said. And, uh, also, as a market consultant, how do you build your identity as a marketing consultant? Because then you, know, <laughs> you kind of have to build it as well, right? Yeah, that's two questions, uh, two uh, questions which, which have similar objectives in a way. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, having worked in, in, and continue to work with young athletes in a very uh, selective manner, um, my recommendation from day one is focus on your sport, focus on your work. Your work is uh, talent, uh, your, your work is uh, train, uh, work on your, uh, on your weaknesses, work on your um, strengths, train, compete, train, compete, repeat, uh, and just do it. And, and all the other stuff around it, you have to delegate and you have to trust the people or the people or the person or the agent that you have around you um, in, in order to assess on the, the different areas. Otherwise, like I said, uh, you, you, you need to be on top of your main purpose 
And if the, your main purpose and your main goal, main, achieve, main achievements is to become world champion or to win Roland Garros or to win the Masters in Augusta uh, or MotoGP. Uh, I kind of like, like Jordan said, right, in the documentary, like the, my success outside the court is what I did in, in, inside. Correct. Correct. And there's no better example than Michael Jordan on that. And I think it's, you know, it's, it, he's, he's a role model. And those who have, you know, been able to follow the last dance, you know, there are elements that, you know, young, upcoming uh, kids, uh, boys and girls uh, and youngsters alike can, you know, look into because you need to focus fully on that, you know. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you are going to be distracted. You know, there, yeah. you are going to be distracted. And, you know, Questions arise these days why, you know, Roger Federer, Rafa Nadal, um, and Djokovic remain at the top. Okay, if you look at their age, still young, <laughs> but yeah. if you look at the upcoming youngsters, none of them can take these guys out of the top. Why? Well, I think one of the comments around our industry is that, you know, they aren't, these three weren't as distracted as Dominic Team, Tsitsipas, uh, Kyrgios with social media and so forth. Could be. It's a good point. Could be, could be. But in any case, all of them have an amazing talent. Um, that we are, you know, different generations. So different generations, different technologies, different scenarios, um, different environments, you know, and, um, you know, uh, different, uh, le let's say, moments of, of entertainment. Right. Um, so, uh, and, and you look at different sports. Um, and yeah, you'd see, uh, you know, how Ronaldo works in, in Juventus, how, you know, Messi in FC Barcelona or Neymar in PSG, um, and Rafa Nadal with, in, 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 in tennis, um, and so forth, you know, and LeBron in basketball, for example, you, there are, you know, you can spot, you know, for youngsters, in I'm sure they will have these or others to inspire in order to, to reach their career objectives. Um, these athletes know that they have an influence and they have a big word in society. So, they, you know, they're aware of what they do, when they do it and how they do it. It's going to make some noise. Um, so, uh, you know, nobody's perfect. Everybody learns from its mistakes. Uh, but, uh, you know, and then looking from your second question, uh, I mean, look, uh, the way I've been working my profile basically has been uh, based on hard work um, but besides hard work it's just learning learning and learning right. um, it, there's no there's no secret uh, recipe here I mean uh, what I always suggest is you know it, it, for those upcoming um, generations into our, into our sport business industries never stop learning Never right. stop learning because I, I don't these days. I continue. Yeah, for sure. You know, I can. You know, I, I continue. All of the and, development. And, correct. You know, correct. And you know, we have nowadays social media, digital technology coming in force more than ever, uh, caused by COVID nineteen in a way as well, uh, into our into our ecosystem uh, of right. the sport industry. And uh, you know, we have we have to go. We, we have to embrace that. We were already embracing it, but now yeah. because of the of the confinement, the, the integration of all of that is speeding up right. in some sports faster than others that is speeding up and it will continue to do so. Uh, and applied right across all the, all the stakeholders in our, in our ecosystem. Um, yeah. And part of my profile has been built basically on a marketing word of mouth. Um, right. You know, I have the privilege to be able to work with some global profile athletes uh, whom have uh, I have been introduced by people who have taken the initiative, right. and um, I think that's one of my, my biggest accomplishments uh, these days. Sure. Um, and um, you know, uh, work attention to detail, and you know, and foremost, and not to be the the least, but have your principles and values very clear. Yeah, for, uh, and not I be think driven. Really good advice, and sure. and I, I want to just like touch, uh, you know 
trying to map out a little bit of concrete, you know, tips for students, young sure. professionals of like, like, where do you start? How do you, how do you succeed? And I remember uh, just like a personal story here that, that just came up on my mind. And I was having, you know, when you talked about like, you know, always learning, right. And, and we talk a lot about, you know, the upcoming generation of, of sport professionals, uh, you know, on the business side future leaders of the industry and I remember I talked to like I had like an informational interview with the CMO of uh, Boston Red Sox and I asked him you know we always got like the, the one of the key thing was like ask ask people about the future trends right and like how do you succeed in all this and obviously that's a great way of like understanding the current situation where you think the market is going right of like you know getting more knowledge but there was one thing he, he, he said to me what I think was very interesting where he said you know, in order for you to succeed, like there's essentially two things, either you have to do something better than us, or you have to come up with something that no one else do that we can right. implement. That, that's sure. what you got to do. So I mean, like, it's a very cliche approach, sure. but it's still kind of true. So I don't know, like, if you want to map out like some concrete uh, tips, sure. like where do students, young professionals start to, you know, succeed and maybe, you know, from a marketing, marketing standpoint to kind of like keep it within the scope here. Sure, sure. I mean, I think, I mean, the, the, first, the first thing I would suggest is, like I said, what are your principles and values? What are your objectives? Right. Yep. Um, having that very clear in your mindset, gain experience. Gain experience, whatever that may be. If it's volleyball in Japan, if it's right. surfing in Australia, uh, a project in uh, South America, uh, or an internship in the U.S., or in the UK, right. uh, embrace, take that challenge, take that internship forward or, or, the, or that job opportunity forward, even if it may not be the right or, or the aspiring project that you want to reach out to, but there's a process. There's a ladder right. that you have to work through. It's a mean, good learning uh, experience. Absolutely. And while you do that process, you are gaining your experience to go and network at the same time yeah. while you gain that experience uh, process. So, um, you know, in, as I said, principles, values, set your targets. Um, <clears throat> and one way or the other, you may be going in, a, in this direction or in another direction, but of course it's ideal to go straight to that target. But it's not always that easy to reach out to that target in a short time frame. So I would suggest also patience. Patience is a virtue. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, and take any opportunity uh, thoroughly. Um, ask, ask, and ask questions. Listen sure. and listen also a lot at the same time and yeah. gain experience and knowledge from those that are, are around you that have a lot of years of experience as well. Right. Um, and that will take you to, you know, make further steps within our industry. So, um, you know, that, you know, if you can also do, you know, uh, a master's degree or an MBA degree in our industry, which I've been noticing myself in the last, um, uh, since 2012, I've been noticing myself how the numbers worldwide are increasing right. of students Massive. willing to pursue a, a career in our industry. It's, you know, it's impressive. Um, so it, it's just a sign, just like a sign of, of the marketplace of sport business, right. you know, between 2018 and 2023, the forecast is of oh, its growth, single digit growth, you know, right. as per our, a, a brief report from PwC, yeah. um, we may have a, you know, a small, um, a, a small adjustment in 2020 within that five year period right. of growth. Um, because of the confinement. Very, very challenging but, year. Very challenging year. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's so, part of the process. And I think uh, you touched upon some really good, uh, you know, not, I wouldn't say like not the typical stuff, you know, kind of like start with yourself, which I think is sort of like a lot of um, uh, students, you know, kind of like, oh, I'm going to become that or I'm going to do that or like I want to be, the, you know, which is great to have that yeah, those targets. Absolutely. Where do you start? Absolutely. I'll let you you to jump in here with a with a few comments. Yeah, because uh, I think it's perfect what you said. And one thing that I always say is like for like I'm I'm having some sort of experience. I moved from Brazil to Norway, 
and uh, I was starting from zero, having my master in a small city, Moda, when I met Tole. And if I were not aware of the opportunity around me, you know, because I, I, I knew that when I had the opportunity, I'm going to make it happen, right? And right. the moment, the opportunity was working with Ole. And I thought it was a great project. And mm -hmm. most of people like, oh, it's just an idea. It's not, but we can make it happen. We have the, the experience. We're studying for, to do that. So if you be aware of the opportunities, you can find great opportunities to help you succeed. That perhaps is not the idea. Well, okay, I'm not going to be the... Market to but it's a process. No, no. Correct. But it's part take, of the process. Take that opportunity as well. You know, it's like you can see it, but unless you actually take it and take that step out, you know, I, I, I see it, you know, times and times that people like, oh, yeah, it wasn't the best, you know, fit for me or like mm -hmm. not exactly mm -hmm. what I was looking for. I'm like, yeah, but at least like unless you try, how do you know, right? Make it, like, make it learn, happen. Learn from it. And, yeah, and it might not be the best thing, but... I, this, just, this just, meeting has been uh, sorry. going. Yeah, yeah, we have one one minute. Yeah. To, to that, that's like, why I'm just gonna like uh, wrap. Up. <laughs> uh, it's been going super fast. We have like unfortunately a, like a time limit on like the two meetings and everything. And I I think like you know we probably will will do like another another call with you, Sarah. Sure. Finish. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Just no dive problem. into some some things. Uh, you know. But I think to wrap it up, you know, we talked a lot about you know the athletes side like how to work as a marketing consultant towards apps. you know some really good tips and advice of like how to succeed where do you start and if there's one thing you know i think everyone that that's listening to the to this can take from it is that you know start with yourself you know what is your objectives what is your goals what is your you know vision and values what do you want to achieve looking into the future the beginner faces a choice that leads him to the triumph or not being surrounded by like-minded professionals can be the best guarantee that you actually take that crucial career step. Sport in Global is a digital network for sports jobs. It gives you the chance to be involved in the sports industry no matter who you are, regardless of gender, nationality, and experience. Our AI system matches up talent with human resources. Candidates who align with the company's values and needs immediately get shortlisted. It saves time for HR and increases the opportunities available to applicants. The platform identifies tailor-made recommendations based on user needs, so you're always aware of the possibilities out there right now. Sport in Global is a place where students gain key tips about jobs and build the valuable connections that are essential for people at the beginning of their career path. The path from candidate to champion starts with a single step in the right direction. Sign up to Sport in Global. All right, so we've been talking a lot about, uh, you know, how how students, you know, kind of like the challenging the challenges they're facing. Of course, like there's a lot of opportunities in 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 sports marketing, and I think, you know, diving a little bit into your your background again, Seraphine, of just. How did you start kind of like your your career in terms of, you know, becoming now kind of like, you know, a international sports marketing consultant? Just like, what was your role, Pat? And, and what could, you know, students of similar interests kind of like start their journey mm -hmm. to, sure. to to create value in, in, in that in that space? Sure. Well, I mean, you know, in order to reach the, the role I currently have within our industry, um, it's either it's either a natural move or a forced move, okay? Right. Because when I started in the year 2000, um, yeah, you know, th there are different areas of the business that, you know, any of uh, audience uh, watching and hearing right now will will understand that you know, you, I started you know doing sales, sponsorship sales, um, business development. Um, right. Interacting with properties, athletes, brands, uh, you know, right holders, um, and you know, started to work on, you know, finalizing deals, doing the sponsorship activation, brand management, um, all, all those components, you know, from you know, from part of the process, you know, um, right. and um, you know, at the end of the day. Um, of course, in year 2000, there was not so much uh, uh, integration of digital, social, etc. Mm -hmm. Within all the properties and all the all the assets 
um, that uh, we were managing at the time. Um, assets being athletes, clubs, teams, federations, right. okay, right holders. That's that's the, uh, the that's the definition of the of the assets within our industry, and yep. uh, and of course nowadays you do the same, you you you, you can do the same, uh, right. you know sales, business development, sponsorship management, yep. um, uh, brand, uh, but with the components of digital, uh, uh, social and, and technology integrated within the all the, the whole ecosystem right now, and within yep. any of the of the assets that uh, you 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 are managing, so. You know, from the consultancy side, you are able to work more on a more on a, a very uh, close format. Okay, right. uh, not that agencies not that agencies cannot do that. Of course, yeah. I'm sure they, they do. But you know, agencies at the end of the day have multiple assets, yeah. uh, a bigger infrastructure, of course. Um, <clears throat> and you know, as as a consultant, you are able to focus on every single detail. Right. And, and in order to deliver maximum value for maximum return investment from the brand side, investing in any of the assets. For sure. um, so, uh, so yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's about understanding, you know, the different, um, you know, categories and stakeholders, right. And kind of like how the processors works. And I think one of the things that um, I, I think it's nice you pull out is, is sales and business development, because I think people are a little bit afraid of like, uh, in, in general, like students are like, oh, sales, you know, it's like, you know, you got to sell a lot. It's like so many phone calls and like, you know, all the, like we, we have like this thing in the U.S. too, where like people are like super afraid of sales. So like working, working in sales, but everyone just want to work in marketing or events. Right. But then they don't realize that actually marketing is a lot of sales in, in a sense. And, and <laughs> it's at part the, of the end, you know, yeah. yeah. And also at the end, you're, you're selling yourself, you know, every day. So like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like meeting new people, like whatever it is, you, you are also selling yourself. So in a sense, I think we have to like look at the, and, and this is kind of like where it's good, where you're like, I started in sales, like business development, sponsorship, and, and like all these parts like created a lot of value for you also understanding how can I sell, you know, which is essentially the athlete or the sponsor or the, what it is in, in the best possible way to your right. different, you know, stakeholders. So at the end, right. you know, sales is very relevant here. And plus you have to do your homework. Right. So you, sure. you cannot just, you know, pick up a phone and speak to a brand. You yeah. have to do your yeah. homework and doing your homework means understanding how that brand operates, how that brand, what, how that brand envisions its involvement within sports, whichever right. that may be, or you know whether it's music or culture right. or, uh, or movies. But you know, as we speak in our industry, you have to do your homework, and that means doing a lot of research work with from your own end, um, analyzing you know uh, recent partnerships, uh, strategies, um, uh, regions where the brand sells its product. Um, you know, brand positioning, whatever, all the detail, all the information you can gather, that will help your sales process. It For will sure. really help you much because it, you have to put yourself within the DNA of the brand in yeah. order to be able to match what you want to what you want to propose. Right. Um, and that becomes a interesting opportunity for the brand. You know. Yeah. It may be interesting for you, but it has to be of interest. <laughs> Uh, for, for the brand in, in particular, you know, so uh, investing wherever that may be, an athlete, a property, um, you know, an event, a federation, whatever that may be, you have to do your homework. For sure. And I think, uh, you know, just uh, letting you here share a little bit on like, you know, he is essentially building Sporting Global's brand, of course, like, you know, through, through the guidelines and our values and vision of what we have set forth since day one, you know, which, we, which we've been very true on. And when I started the company too, I was like, okay, this is what we stand for. This is our values. This is our pillar. It also gave him, you know, some frameworks to build on. And now, you know, again, like... I see him like, you know, I'm like, obviously I don't see him because now we're in like Norway, Portugal and kind of like this <laughs> stuff. But I, 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 I see him, you know, essentially reading, you know, these books, these, these, you know, a lot of, you know, inspiring and, and, and to keep aware of like, you know, 
how are I am how am I gonna you know build this brand and and you know I don't know if you want to touch upon you know this kind of like you know gaining new knowledge you know staying ahead you know of the trends uh, you know mm-hmm. and also finding solution that fits you know our brand our identity and what we're trying to do here. Yeah, sure. I think uh, what set of things is related to what we're doing because when you would try, you always say something, right? So when I went to talk with Ole, I had to say myself to him to make he could trust in me so I could start working with him. I think you have, everyone have to do the same, and but you also have to understand each if your values fit the organization, right? And we have this example, and we uh, in a platform we have the values to do the matchmaking. And for, for us, this is very important. And when he delivered to me, okay, this is the business plan. We have the pillars, network, experience, knowledge. We have to work around this. I said, okay, so how are we going to build this? I said, first, I get two young guys, you know, start a new project. I come from Brazil, moving to Norway, starting from, no one knows me here, like completely from zero. But okay, we, we know the path, we know the pain, we've been through this. So I said, Ole, first of all, let's start doing videos. So then we start to create Ole image around this. So people could understand Ole. He's a guy who likes to talk. He, he expressed very well. I'm like, prefer to be in the backstage, organizing everything, trying to make things work. So we started from that. And I said, the second step, we need to do the blog, right? Because then mm-hmm. we're gonna have, we're gonna be able to build our beauty sport in global, following the pillars that you want the others to do the same. So Doing the videos, like we, we're starting to gain more experience, how to provide the best videos, the blog the same, how we can improve our blogs, our interviews, our, our questions. And through this, we're talking with people. So talking with people, we're gaining knowledge as we're doing here. Like right. we're gaining right. knowledge, asking questions to you and learning from you, from your experience, like what you pass to your students. And then we start right. to understand what fit and doesn't fit into our business plan. And then we can start to map out, sure. re- reorganize to make, to go to the right direction. And mm-hmm. the last part is the networking. So we we'll never be able to gr- have the growth that we are having now, like without spending any money, if you're not doing the blog and the podcast, because of course, how, how do we start? So we start with our friends. We always have friends like working in the sport industry who has been an athlete. So we invite them, mm-hmm. they give us the support. But this is the first step. Then, okay, and now like, who can you introduce us? And then they introduce, they give good word, and we do the same with other people. And then you start to grow and to grow and to grow. And then we have some people have interest around us because on social media, there's a lot of people saying good words about us. And we are trying to provide. Because for us, it's much more than a transaction, right? It's much more the experience that we can create to help the students and the professionals to join the mm-hmm. platform and to make what, you, what we're doing real. And, and this sure. is the pain yeah. to find an opportunity in the sport industry. So. Mm-hmm. Of course, in, in between, there's a lot of stuff like trying to read more books to understand how the startup life yeah. works, like a, great, right. a lot yeah. of startup competition to learn how to pitch, how, how does it work, these questions. But I think we have the essence that is network experience knowledge. Uh, we mm-hmm. do this from day one and we are very, we believe very 100% in what we're doing. And uh, if we keep doing what we're doing, I think we're going to make it happen and people can understand okay this guy is saying that network experience knowledge is the pillars but okay if we do what you're doing like if you do this you can do the same for your personal life and then mm-hmm. to, to succeed so and we always sell him. like I, i'm not a, like a like a sales guy like i learned a lot with Ole. you know like i said mate i just help me here with the text and this what, what i do and like just just help so we, we always learn it's, it's, it, that is but, yeah uh, <clears throat> We, it's you know it's it, every day is a challenge. Um, every day we compete. Every day we sell. Right. Whatever we yeah. may do, whatever industry we're in, um, and uh, you know it's what drives you, what motivates you to reach your targets, to reach your your objectives. That you know you have to be prepared for better moments than others uh, and confront them and learn from them and uh, you know everybody makes mistakes through the process so uh, but that's part of the learning experience and it's part of the backpack I was talking about yeah that you know that you need to fill up um, in order to reach in order to reach your goals um, but you know uh, it's 
you know, that the, every client or every project has different variables, different situations, different scenarios. Yeah. Um, so, um, and we you all know, just have to go, go through that. Well, like two years ago, like when you uh, we were signing our blog, we write an article about like the roller coaster, right? How the startup yeah. is a roller coaster. <laughs> said if you look at now if you're going to rewrite the article like that was like a shopping mall roller like coaster now yeah, that, that was a that was a nice roller coaster in compared to what we're doing uh the, the <laughs> last year but, but that's also part of growth right and i think great uh, yeah. you know it, it's like the bigger you become the bigger challenges you have but it like it also means that you're making progress so it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of part of the journey but i, I think mm -hmm. like one one of the things it, where uh you know haven't missed like we touched lightly upon is about creating value you know of mm -hmm. like wherever you are and and of course like we can talk about like you know the blog and the podcast and like you know also the stuff that you are doing you know but at the end it's like like are we creating value for our audience and what we're trying to achieve right and this is essentially why we created the podcast because we wanted to create Great you know, give people now that are sitting home, of course, or, or working from home or what it might be yeah. and give them a, an arena of like, how can I be better prepared for the day when the industry is back on its feet? Because it's going right. to happen. And, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. we're, we're, we're glad to have you, you know, as part of it. Sure. Too. No, and I think through this process, it, of course, now with the last, you know, the last two months uh, or three months that, you know, I, I raise always the importance of working within a team environment. Yeah. You know, like I said before, yeah, you know, listen, 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 ask, 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 but, you know, work always as a team. Uh, right. Within, if there are multicultural backgrounds within the team, even better, because you are going to enrich yourself, you know? Right. Uh, and, you know, of course, this current scenario, working as a team, it's via technology. Oh. Um, so, you know, I think we are, and, and it's, you know, positive that we are gradually moving back to a certain normality um, with different sports and different leagues coming back as well uh, and people going back to their offices as well. But, uh, you know, I think uh, that element, um, it, it's, it's, it's important because today we all learn from each other. Right. We all learn from each other. One thing that I just want to, to bring up is uh, we're talking this uh, one year ago, I think, Ole and I, about the, how to grow to understand other markets and well it was very smart to use interns to help the the, the company right said like never gonna do any everything by yourself you need you need some help so like we have the party in the usf uh, in the san francisco so like, let's get an intern there so they can help us so mm -hmm. the, with this uh, covid crisis one thing that perhaps the uh, all companies and agents they 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 can start doing it's Giving, you utilize this, okay, you know that we can make it work, working from home. Because people are working, people are making work. So, mm -hmm. like more opportunities to students to understand the market. Okay, I'm a, I'm a club from Spain, I want a student from China to understand the market. So why not have an intern there to do some research to help them and so forth. So there is some, like, of course, it's great that what we're doing, but I think that it, it's part of the change that you want to make, give more opportunities and make understand that, okay, now the crisis opened this door for us. Let, let's make them understand how they can utilize this in their favor. Correct. Absolutely. And an I think they, yeah, yeah, it is, an, it is an opportunity scenario. Um, of course, it's, it's a, an additional challenge on top yeah. of the, the normality of um, but it's a fact. Yeah, the current situation is an additional uh, or greater challenge for, for those wanting to be part of the industry. But I, what I would re you know, highly recommend with them is that you know, continue to learn every day. Uh, yeah. We have a different scenario at the moment that we have to spend more time at home. Uh, but embrace yourself of, of you know, different information and news and details from different brands, different sports uh, worldwide. Uh, and the internet facilitates that. Right. Social facilitates in one way in one way or, or the other also some some details on that um and you know uh, uh, and take it from there by also looking at what opportunities are there for for you that you may fit because you know platforms like uh, you know like yourselves and or linkedin you know there are many many uh, opportunities for internships uh, right. that would become or are already available 
And it's by them having the right initiative and the right motivation moving forward to try and find those opportunities wherever that may be in the world. Because right, right now, uh, we live in a very globalized uh, economy and industry. Um, and like I said before in the, in the beginning, if you are ready to embark yourself in this, in this process in this, and within a, a career in our industry, you know, be, be certain and prepared to go through the process, through the challenges, through better and tougher moments, that it's, it's part of the learning, learning experience that will help you position yourself um, in a better stance uh, in the future. So uh, they take action now um, and, 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 and embrace whatever opportunity that, that comes available. Sure. Well, well, let's let's dive a little bit into um, you know, like obviously you you are a professor to you know teaching a lot of yep. young students, professionals, and we haven't touched Correct. too much upon upon that. But sure. but what do you what do you essentially see as their main challenges? And and, and I think like just looking obviously you know from uh, you know uh, in a sense where your your uh, you know sports is very attractive uh you know so in general like it's a lot of people wanting to you know go inside inside the industry both you know you have fans you have people studying sports you have people uh you yeah. know transferring from other industries and there is a lot of competition there and and now you know even even now we, it's maybe even more challenging because you know a lot of yeah. organizations has laid off staff or permitted some of their staff and and there's kind of like you know uh, we're like what do you see as their main challenges and essentially what can you do to separate yourself from from anyone else like what would be kind of like what can i do you know as a, as a student and i know i know this is not an easy easy question but it's also a very important question you know to yeah to no no of out. course absolutely and and you know as, as as much as we can you know through this podcast assist or help uh these upcoming generations within our industry uh you know more, more than more than happy to do so. Um, um, I mean, the challenge right now is possibly greater, but again, are you ready? If yeah. you are ready to embrace the challenge, just do it. You'll because, find a way. You'll find a way. Of course, you will find a way. Make you make 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 yourself um, aware of the current map. Right. But in order to go through that jungle. Uh, you know, be certain to uh, learn as much as possible, inform yourself, read, um, search for footage, uh, search, you know, experiences, interact or network with people that you know within the industry. Yeah, we're, we're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all good. Yeah, all good. okay. Um, and, and um, you know, uh, talk, interact, as I said before, whatever opportunity you may have as an internship or as an employee, member of staff, um, whatever that project may be, take it, learn a lot, listen a lot. Um, you know, in my, my experience as a professor uh, since 2012 in two business schools, and I'm currently uh, working in one, which is sports management, sports management school, SMS, yep. out of the Barcelona campus. Um, you know, we, we, we understand that the number one objective, when they finish, they master's degree in sports marketing and sponsorship or, or yeah. other, or other course they may be uh, pursuing is, you know, they want step in an office and work. Right. Um, you know, what we suggest, what we recommend and what we are able to assist in one way or the other as professors who are actively working in the industry yeah. is, is orient, guide, uh, suggest, uh, recommend, introduce right. in one way or the other. But, you know, we, we, we cannot, we don't have the key for, yeah. uh, you know, jobs the day after. I mean, the at the end, it's up to them, right? But you can give them a Correct. lot of, like, you, you can kind of like do a lot of sort of like building them a framework, you know, to go after. Because it's important what we say, what, it's important that they have languages that yeah. if there's a minimum background within the industry, that helps. Yeah. Um, it is a fact, like you will said before, Ole, um, many people, all ages, yeah. uh, from different industries, different, you know, different categories are willing to be part of this industry. 
uh, yeah. moving from finance or from FMCG into the world of sport. Um, you know, many people say, why? Well, what, what, one other thing I would recommend everybody, especially those young, young generations moving up, um, if you have passion for this, you have to demonstrate and you have to show it day in, day right. out, right. you know, from minute one, because that passion will drive you, yeah. go through the process in better or tougher moments in the right way, you know? Um, sure. Like I said in the beginning, my passion was at the time was tennis. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, you know, I knew if I was going to break the ATP ranks, I, you know, I had it very, very clear that I wanted to be part of this industry and yeah. work on the management side. But I, have to, I had to work my way through it. It's not right. easy. Many people want to be part of this industry. It's a fact. Um, but, you know, and I, and I think why possibly the reasons that this industry attracts so many generations and so many people from different industries. You know, I always say that within, within the economies that we live in right now and the, the different industries that compose um, and form part of the economy, the industry of sport is the or one of the most emotional, yeah, for sure. uh, powerful, uh, in the mindsets of consumers than any other yeah. industry in the world. You know, it's sport, music, yeah, cinema, but, you know, right. sport and music, specifically uh, sport, you know, there's an average average growth rate of, uh, of over 4% in the right. industry of sport, That's you know. Crazy. That means brands investing into our industry. You know, brands deciding that I don't want to do any more advertising through traditional media, no more on TV, no more on uh, outdoor. Right. I go digital. I go social. Uh, and, and, an the more, and, and, and the more and more all oriented right? to sports and all linked towards sports. You know, the ecosystem, whether it's an athlete or a brand or a team, it's right. that association. You know, yeah, and also yeah. more more universities, right? In business schools, every year you have more universities uh, promoting sports related programs. So that's right. the people are looking for education to to join the the industry. Correct. So, you know, it, it, it's an example. And I think, and, and that's why, you know, uh, my part or my way to contribute responsibly with the new generations uh, is what I said before, because that's part of my first class. Right. What are your principles? What are your values? Yeah. Don't be yeah. driven. Don't be driven to be part of this industry because of the great life that you see on Instagram. Or <laughs> right, right. Because that's not real. That's no. surreal. And that's only a part of a few iconic athletes right. around the world. And that, you know, there are, there are situations that you, need to, that you need to take into consideration and encounter. Right. Uh, and, and so that's why I begin with that, because it's, it's fundamental. And education is a key component of our industry. And it's, uh, you know, uh, for example, ATP works well with athletes because you know, they have an university. And they, you know, upcoming athletes work within that university with ATP staff right. how to deal with media how do you deal with sponsors how yeah. to communicate you know how to and this i think it's uh an atp have been doing a great job uh, a great job on this uh, for many many years right. and i think this is something that other sports have to embrace or, or, or take upon because right. you know there are certain sports that this would only help the athlete manage a career right. successfully because you look at sports most sports is a 10, 15 year career span right. in terms of athletes yeah, yeah. on the management side. Yeah. You can be working in this industry for 40, yeah, 50 for, years. Yeah. For a long time. But principles, values, your ethics in, yeah, in, yeah. in general, you know, um, well, for sure. It, it starts with the foundation. Right. And I think, um, you know, going back to a little bit as well of, you know, as you said, building your backpack, you know, is, is very key. Correct. But I think I also talk a lot about this for, for like when I've been, like pitching, you know, um, presenting a lot for students because, you know, our goal is to help them succeed, right. And find their career path. And I think, uh, you know, which has been like a common thread is that people kind of like, Oh, I want to be, you know, the CEO of Manchester United or like, you know, the, 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 the general manager of, uh, you know, Golden State Warriors or like AD of like Stanford Athletics, right. And, and I'm like, that, that's great. Right. Of course. But realize that there's so much more, you know, you can do, and this is going to take time. And I think also, you know, as we talk about, it's a very attractive industry, 
and and I think people uh, first and foremost uh, need to try you know and see is the sport industry actually something for you because you can say like oh yeah no I want to be part of it because you know I can meet players I can do this I can attend games and like but but that's just this much you know like it's everything else you have to and that have to what do, you just right? what you just said that's part of your passion you're right yeah. and that passion is fantastic that you have yeah. it within for sure but this is management business and, right. and you need to unify both right your passion with management towards to making this a, a business a real business so uh, like you just said this is just a little part and yeah, you yeah. need to learn a lot of things to you know integrate that passion into successful business uh projects stories um and um and results at the end of the day so uh, yeah for sure (laughs) but let's let's try to like uh, wrap up here a little bit with with something that i think you know is is something that uh you know people talk a lot and we we touch a lot upon like experience but there's one thing i want to talk about and that's that's networking um, you know, or like it's, it's a big challenge for a lot of people because they don't know where to start. You know, like how do you, how do you start? Like, you know, imagine like, yeah, even myself, like I started like my undergrad when I was like 19 in sport management. I uh, obviously mm-hmm. I did like some coaching, like I knew some people, but at the same time I was like, like, and they like, yeah, build a network. Right. And I'm like, but like, where do I start? You know, like, how do mm-hmm. I do it? And I think mm-hmm. like, that is probably one of the key elements, which we also saw, like, you know, going back to like, and I, and I can't emphasize this enough, like without the two works I put in, in the U S building my network, this business would have been very hard to do, you know, what I'm doing to this. Yeah, I'm sure. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it, and, and as you know, too, you know, you have a lot of references, you know, from doing like your stuff because of your network and of course mm-hmm. the value you provided. Uh, can, yep. can you touch a little bit upon like the sure. value of network and where, where should people begin, you know, kind of like briefly? Look, uh, the, the way you build your network is, uh, it, it of course, it, start, it starts by interacting with people that think alike with or, or that have the same similar interests within that industry. Right. Um, that's one thing. Even though you don't, may not know one, you know, may not know that person, um, but you do your research, you do your work. Uh, right. Connect with them via LinkedIn, for example. You know, or Sporting is, Global. <laughs> or Sporting Global, global of course. <laughs> yeah, no, no, of course, for sure. But you know, connect with them. Um, just you know, follow them, uh, follow their content, follow the information they release, they publish. Engage, engage with them, info, right? Engage with them, or correct. You know, set up moments um, that, you know, can allow you, you know, 20, 30 minute conversations right. to, to understand more of that industry, uh, and how you can make your steps forward. Right. Um, you know, and over time, of course, as per my case, I've been building my network by, 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 yes, my projects that I've been able to accomplish, yeah. uh, of course, certain achievements helps, uh, but in principle, how I work. Right. If you work with ethics, with professionalism, integrity, yeah, the word of mouth. That's the marketing that yeah. I've been uh, I've been uh, having in the last uh, for sure, right? In, in the last 10, 15 years for sure, and, yeah. and and that word of mouth marketing equals to credibility, and yeah. has allowed me, and allows me continue uh, uh, today uh, to to work with global icon athletes and, and right. other properties and other teams. To, for you know to deliver or develop potential business partnerships um, sure. but, but building that network so, so building the net building the network is um, it's an it's a never-ending process never-ending process look I mean I, I, I think a, a movie that some some of our audience may may have seen may, or may have not seen but uh, you know uh, Jerry Maguire uh, exemplifies a bit or great part right. of what our industry is like. Yeah, you know, um, there's great moments. But there are also tough moments. That's why I said Always. from the beginning that you know the principles, the values. Yeah, that's where you start. So, uh, but like I said, building your network, it's over time. It's day in, day out, every month, every year, um, every season. Um, 
and, and gather information or, or, or learn, read, be part of conferences, be part of events, right. wherever right. you can, you know, and be proactive at those conferences, you know, reach at the out. end of the day, your attitude, you. your attitude yeah. is going to drive you in one direction or another, you right. know, so, um, and there's no better success story that all the mistakes you've made, you've made before, yeah. you know, um, because from those mistakes, we improve at the end of the day. So, yeah. Uh, j just a quick question before you wrap up, because we have like less than yep. minutes. And uh, of course, like we're building Sporting Global with this idea to help, of course, young professionals and students to, to enter the career, to build valuable connections. But nowadays, we, we utilize LinkedIn. Most of us use LinkedIn to, to, mm -hmm. to work and, and everything. But there's a, a big challenge because as LinkedIn get more, uh, more people join LinkedIn and utilize LinkedIn, more people are like just adding other people like it was Facebook few years ago. I just want to have this person like to have numbers. So, and this creates a big challenge because sometimes you send a message for a person trying to create a network and try to see how you can develop a partnership or a business, but you never get an answer from this person. Everyone that is, that is uh, related to the mm sports -hmm. industry and sending me uh, a connection, I always say like, thank you for the connections or, or if I add someone, I try to, to do the same. But most of times like people don't reply. So, how do you see that you can tackle this challenge and students can don't quit that you okay I, I try but people are not answering like how, how to move from there it's yeah, yeah no it's not easy i mean i i would firstly say that whatever wherever wherever we are working with whatever the role we have that's my view yeah respect yeah everybody for sure, for sure. because um you never know that they all, have to, right? Correct. No, we all, we're all, you know, we're all humans and we are all have different roles, different responsibilities, different uh, working environments, and you work and represent, you know, different entities, right. uh, different assets uh, at the end of the day, but we are all human beings. So I know it may be tough not to get answers. We also have to understand from the, uh, from the student side that, you know, these top executives, usually have a very limited time frame available to interact yeah, yeah. Or, net or network you know but wherever you can follow them if they don't you know reply or you know or try and understand like i said understand how their brand works or try and understand how that person that you want to connect with what kind of profile what, what's you know understanding their role the management the responsibility that they have and um, because it, it, it's nearly impossible to respond everything every day you know right for sure uh depending on your profile of course i mean uh you know a a top athlete cannot sign every signature of every fan around the world you know yeah um so but you know you have to you have to be patient you have to understand and, and you know comprehend that you know these executives have a major responsibility is managing huge budgets um and and you and know, also think and, about like how are you, you know, creating value for them? Like what's, what's in it for them, you know? C correct. You know, um, and, um, you know, some, you know, maybe flexible or more, more receptive than others, but, uh, you know, try and follow the brand, try and follow that executive and see that content they publish, they, they release, uh, be part of webinars, uh, also, and listen to them through their, their, their participation. Um, and, um, and, you know, like I said, if you do your homework and you try to connect with them, um, you know, try and match or try and understand to speak the same kind of language, you know, in, in one way or another. Um, and, and, you know, by connecting by them or with the brands, uh, explore the opportunities those brands may have because, you know, from internships to junior level openings th there's always opportunities you know? and uh, you know and, you know take the opportunity to uh, take the opportunity to uh, to congratulate you guys at sporting global because i think uh, you know integrating ai within their uh, you know re re recruitment process uh, is not future is now it's happening it's going to happen uh, in a very short term pr uh, uh, term um, so you know i you know i wish you guys all the very best and, and much much uh, luck and success um because it, it's 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 an initiative that's going to make a difference uh, and you know as long as that helps the new generations become part of this industry or, or any other 
um, right. it would be fantastic. Well, we, we appreciate that and uh, surfing. We will, we appreciate your time, your knowledge for, you know, taking the time, sharing your expertise with, with us, mm -hmm. with the, with the audience, with the people listening. And it's been a, it's been a great conversation. I think we, we all learned a lot uh, from this and, and then like we really scratched the surface, you know, of like <laughs> There's so much. And, and, there's so much. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the topics within there. And I think, uh, you know, if there's one thing I want to like highlight from this conversation is um, how, it imp how important it is for, for people to, uh, you know, especially when you're young, you're starting your career is that start with kind of like your values, your objectives and start with yourself. And I think like that is probably one of the, uh, like really great advice that I appreciate that you, you give me, of course, like, you know, learn and all this stuff, but like build your foundation, know what you stand for, you know? And, and, and I think mm -hmm. the decisions that you make after that will be a lot easier. And, uh, you know, you, you kind of like, you know, you will have a better understanding of like, um, you know, what people you should connect with, what kind of uh, companies that align with what you're doing and, and try to understand, you know, uh, and then that's also where our AI comes in too, right? Where we're, we want to match people not only based on your skill set, right? But also about mm -hmm. like what is your ethics and your values, right? So we can help you as a user or an organization find people that can provide you value. You know, at, at the end, that's where it comes down to. Correct. And I think Correct. for you, you know, with your clients is that, you know, you, you won't say yes to every client just because they have a big name or whatever it is. It's, it's about... Where do they fit into your values and what you want to, you know, kind of like what is important for you and your right. ethics. And how you can be part of and contribute yeah, to exactly. the combined, the combined uh, set of objectives. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, um, so yeah, like you well said, uh, Ole, uh, you know, we just scratched the surface. <laughs> um, I think there is so much around um, our industry um, happening right now. Uh, and that will continue to happen in the coming months and the coming years. Um, definitely will be thriving. Uh, great to see many generations um, willing to be part of this industry. Yeah. Um, but uh, like I always said, you know, keep the motivation up high and um, and just do it. <laughs> There's no mm -hmm. other way about it. So yeah, th this is why we're here. You know, keep keep you motivated. I don't know, Edie, if you want to have like any final final remarks or comments. No, I think it was a it was a great talk. Basically, my my first podcast as well. I think it was a great experience. Uh, and, uh, Likewise, <laughs> I think this it's part of the process, right? And I always say that uh, people can get inspiration not only from the big, like key professionals, CEO, but there are uh, other professions that work to see in industries. That's why we're trying to do it's point global, share their stories, share it right. from students who go abroad and to help people to find a way to achieve their goals. You know? So we are showing different ways. Now it depends on you to your motivation because we cannot motivate anyone. The motivation is apart from yourself. And you just- Inner drive. Inner drive. Yeah, and then you find, find, find the- Absolutely. Absolutely. Find the methods and the way that you're going to do it and just do it. Leave the process and keep always learning, developing, networking and gaining all Correct. Correct, absolutely. Well, with right. that, Serafin and Idu, I would like to thank both of you for ta taking the time. Of course, Serafin, a special special thank you to you. Uh, and I hope all of you enjoyed listening to this. It's been a great conversation. Uh, you know, we could talk forever uh, about sports. and you know, like we're we, all do, we do the part two. We do the part two. <laughs> we'll do, we'll do Why like not? You never know. <laughs> sure. I mean, too, you know, in a couple months' time, we, we see where things are moving. And I think there's a sure. lot to discuss so with that i would like to thank everyone for taking the time for listening and we always finish with this not kiss this not kiss <laughs> this not kiss very good, Take huh? care. Very good. good. Nice. <laughs>